Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel, At Home with Willowberry. Or if you're new, welcome. But where have you been? I'm so happy to see you here. My name is Valerie, and in today's video, I thought I'd bring you all along with me as I go through a typical day here in our double wide mobile home. There's some cleaning, cooking, and organizing. It was a beautiful fall day here in our little corner of the Virginia mountains. So if you're interested, I hope you'll stick around and enjoy the video. are you all doing today? I hope you're all happy, healthy, and safe wherever you are in this big old world of ours. We're doing good. It's been kind of hectic around here the last couple of weeks between running to doctor's appointments, caring for granny, and running the boys all over town. We haven't had much free time to work on the house or film videos. But things are starting to settle down and I finally got a chance to get a video out for you guys. I wish I had an update on the renovations, but unfortunately we're still waiting on drywall. Tim has a few more things to button up before the drywall installers can get started, like building a new bathroom wall in Granny's room and jacking up the floor in one of the bedrooms. As soon as we're ready for the drywall, I'll definitely give you all a before and after tour of the three bedrooms that we're working on. We're getting there. It's just taking longer than expected. I also have to remind myself that we're not as young as we used to be, and I don't move as fast as I used to. And as you can see, I've injured my foot, so I'm in a boot for a while. My foot and ankle feel a hundred times better since being in the boot, so don't worry about me. I'm good to go. I just wish I had more time in the day to get things done around here. Alright, well enough complaining from me. All that just to say I'm sorry if you were hoping for a renovation video. Today, I'm hoping to bring y'all some good old-fashioned homemaking motivation. So if you're ready, let's just get into the video. To get my day started, I'm going to go ahead and change the sheets on my bed and straighten up my room a little. We put the majority of our belongings into storage, so Tim has been using a cardboard box as a bedside table. But we went and got our table out of storage, so I want to go ahead and switch those out. We went down to North Carolina a couple of weeks ago to get some stuff out of storage for Granny, and we brought back some more beautiful quilts that belonged to her. I'm not entirely sure if she made the one that I'm going to be using today, but it's very beautiful. I got a few questions about how I clean our quilts. To be honest, I really don't do anything special. We take the quilts to the laundry mat and I wash them with just detergent on the normal cycle with cold water. These quilts are in really good condition, so I don't worry about putting them into the washer and dryer. If they were vintage, I would probably be washing them by hand, but so far I haven't had any problems washing my quilts in the washing machine. All right, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and finish making my bed, and then we'll see what else I can get into today.
Well, our room is clean and the plants are watered, so now I'm going to head into the kitchen where I need to wash a few dishes and then sweep them off the floors. But first, I need to refill a couple of my cleaning supplies. I use Lysol for just about everything. Floors, counters, walls, toilets. I use it on just about every surface except for windows. We've been discussing how we want to design the kitchen. I think I want to go with white cabinets, white backsplash, and white counters with snap lock vinyl flooring that looks like wood and a walnut finish or maybe even a chestnut. I'm not sure yet. I just know I want a warm color on the floor. We'll just have to wait and see how it turns out, and I can't wait to get started. All right, y'all, well, I'm going to go wash a few dishes. Okay, so the dishes are clean, for now. It won't be long before the sink is full again, that's for sure. But now I need a sweep and mop. I'm using a Swiffer mop for now, but I plan on getting a spin mop. Living in a construction zone and having three boys and three dogs who constantly track in dirt, I tell you what, it's hard to keep these floors clean. The Swiffer mop doesn't exactly do the best job in the world, but it's better than getting down on my hands and knees and scrubbing the floor by hand. I definitely need a better mop, and I would like to invest in a Roomba robot vacuum cleaner once we put in all new flooring. But in the meantime, I'll just have to make do with what I have on hand. Alright, well let's go wash some floors.
As much as I dread washing dishes and cleaning floors, I always feel much better when it's finished, that's for sure. There's not much to clean in the living room. I just need to dust off the shelving unit, and then I'm going to head outside to straighten up the front porch and visit with my sweet Milo. The front porch has become my favorite spot to sit and relax and eat my meals. Any free chance I get, you'll find me out on the front porch either coloring, editing, or playing with Milo. But I'm getting sad. It's almost starting to get too cold to sit outside. Tim got me a Mr. Heater to use on the front porch on cold evenings. The front porch has become like my living room since we don't have any living room furniture at the moment. We do have a recliner in the bedroom that I think I'll move into the living room near the wood stove to make a comfy spot to relax inside. I'm going to miss sitting outside listening to the birds chirp, hearing the wind rustle through the leaves, and looking at the mountains out in the distance, especially now that the leaves are changing color. But it's just too cold for me. I can't wait to start using the wood stove, but it still needs a lot of work before we can use it. For instance, we need a wood stove installer to come out and install a new chimney for us. And Tim needs to take the stove outside to sand it and paint it with a fire-resistant paint. There was a leak in the ceiling for several years around the old chimney, and the stove is rusted. That will be our next project that we'll get started on once the drywall installers start their work. 
All right, well, once I finish straightening up the porch, I'm going to head back into the kitchen to put together a microwave stand. We bought a microwave at Walmart a couple of weeks ago, but I just didn't have anywhere to put it in the kitchen, so it's just been sitting in the box. So I went ahead and ordered a microwave stand from Amazon, and that's what I'm putting together now. It was actually pretty easy to put together. There was just one little part that confused me, so I had to call Tim in for backup. He would have built it for me, but I really do enjoy building furniture, and he was busy working on other projects. All I know is it would be nice to have a microwave again. You never realize how much you used a microwave until you don't have one anymore. I mean, yeah, we survived without it for the past four months, but we sure do miss that microwave popcorn.
This microwave stand is exactly what I was looking for. It has two shelves that will fit four canvas baskets that I bought at Walmart for storing root vegetables, bread, or kitchen towels. And there are also two more smaller shelves at the top to display some tchotchkes, a plant, or even some coffee cups. It's just what we needed. I'm so glad to finally have a new microwave and stand and that we can mark that project off our to-do list. But now it's time to take a little break and go walk the dogs. Once we get back from walking the dogs, then I'll head back inside to get dinner started. Tonight we're having apple cider glazed chicken with apples, oven roasted spaghetti squash, Brussels sprouts, and white rice. And it's going to be delicious. But first, let's get some fresh fall air with our Max and Willow. And if we're lucky, Milo will come along too. I love it when he comes on walks with us. We really did luck out when he found us back at the trailer park. All right, y'all, let's go get some fresh air.
Well, y'all, I think we've had a pretty productive day here at the trailer. This morning, I straightened up our room, cleaned the kitchen, living room, and front porch, and then in the afternoon, we put together the microwave stand. But now the boys are home from school, and it's time to get dinner started. I planned on having chicken thighs for dinner tonight, but I wanted to try a new recipe. Since we're in the midst of fall at the moment, and there's a chill in the air, I wanted to make a delicious fall recipe. I googled classic fall chicken recipes and came across one for apple cider glazed chicken with apples. There were a few ingredients that I needed, so Tim stopped by the grocery store for me. I needed the apple cider, fresh thyme, and shallots. I had all the other ingredients that the recipe called for here at the house. We're also going to be having roasted spaghetti squash, Brussels sprouts, and white rice. I think I need a sharper knife, y'all. This spaghetti squash was kicking my butt. I usually just cut the squash in half and roast it upside down with the skin side facing up. But I came across a recipe where they cut the squash into slices, and I thought, oh, that looks nice. Let's cut the squash like that tonight. Well, I don't recommend it. It was a lot of hard work for the exact same results in the end. To make spaghetti squash, I would just cut the squash in half, remove the pulp and seeds, drizzle with olive oil, sprinkle with salt and pepper, and place on a baking sheet with the skin side up. Then bake at 400 degrees till the squash is soft which takes about 45 minutes, depending on how big your squash is. That is how I prefer to make my spaghetti squash. So now I'm just going to prep the squash, shallots, apples, and thyme, and then I'll start the chicken.
This recipe calls for sweet apples. I'm using gala apples since that's what I have on hand, but the author of the recipe states that you could also use Honeycrisp, Roma, or Fuji apples. I'm going to rinse the apples in cold water and then I'll slice them and remove the seeds. The apples are all sliced up and ready to go, so next I'm going to slice up some shallots. I forgot to mention that I'm actually doubling the recipe. Would you believe I've never cooked with shallots before? So if it looks like I'm using too much, well, I probably am. I didn't want to waste the shallots, and since it was a small container, I decided to use all of them. Okay, so I'm going to slice up the shallots, and then I'm going to dice up some fresh thyme.
The oven is now preheated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, so I'm ready to put the squash in the oven, and then I'll start prepping the chicken thighs. I like to rinse the chicken in cold water and to trim off the excess fat. After I rinse the chicken, I'll pat them dry with paper towels, and then I'll be seasoning the thighs with salt, pepper, and dried thyme. I'll then brown the chicken on both sides in olive oil and butter. Okay, so I've rinsed, dried, and seasoned the chicken, and now I'm browning it in some butter and olive oil on medium-high heat. I want the skin side to be golden brown. Once the chicken is brown on all sides, I'll then add the shallots, apples, and sprigs of thyme to the pan. While the chicken is browning, I'm going to go ahead and get the liquids ready. I need two cups of apple cider that I'll use to deglaze the pan, and I need chicken broth, soy sauce, and dry mustard all mixed together that gets added to the pan later after it has been deglazed. Don't worry y'all, I'll leave the recipe link in the description box down below just in case y'all want to give it a try. Alright y'all, I have everything I need prepped and ready to go. The squash is roasting away in the oven. The white rice is cooking in the rice maker, and I decided to cook some Brussels sprouts to go with our dinner tonight.
The smells that are coming from my stove are so delicious. I could just toss the brown chicken into the oven to finish cooking through, and it would be delicious just the way it is. But we're going to kick it up a notch by making a sweet apple cider glaze to smother the chicken with. To get started, I'm going to saute the shallots for a minute or two, and then I'll add the apples and fresh thyme to the pan and saute the shallots, apples, and thyme together for a few more minutes. Next, I'll be deglazing the pan. Dinner is almost ready, y'all. I decided to throw some biscuits in the oven, so as soon as they're finished cooking, then I'll start pulling all the food from the stove. But in the meantime, look who's come to visit, Mr. Max and Sweet Willowberry.
The chicken has finally reached an internal temperature of at least 165 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the chicken out of the pan. My liquids aren't really reducing into a glaze like it's supposed to. I don't know if doubling the recipe messed it up, but I had to pour off some of the liquid. I'm going to let it reduce down a little bit more, but I never actually got it to turn into a glaze. It was still very delicious, just not thick and sticky like I expected it to be. If any of you tried this recipe, maybe you can let me know where I went wrong. I probably just needed to wait a little bit longer for it to thicken, but the rest of the food was starting to get cold and my boys were ready to eat. This is real life, y'all, and not everything turns out perfect, but I wouldn't call it a bust. The kids still really enjoyed it. Well, y'all, I really enjoyed spending my day with you. It was a productive, beautiful fall day here in the Virginia mountains. I really hope you all enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you in my next one. You all take care of yourselves, and I'll see you real soon. Have a great day. Bye, y'all.